Welcome back, all you fabricants and flashbacks, to the super, not funny show, Supercast. I am Mo Poupe, your resident fabricant and common extraordinaire on all things pop culture. And I'm joined today by my good friend, Lottie, who, uh, as you know, is a superhero fanatic, uh, just like I am. Uh, so, mm-hmm. how you doing today, Lottie? What's going on with you, man? I'm doing great. Really, I'm excited to talk about this uh, Black Widow movie, but yeah, let's first get into the news. Yeah, and yes, as uh, Lottie's mentioning, this is the uh, the episode we like to call Black Widow versus Random Taskmaster, and uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think you'll understand what that means later when we get into the Black Widow review. But as you know, this is the Supercast, and. Uh, on the Supercast, we like to talk about all things related to superheroes in the pop culture space. Um, not counting the comics, because, you know, that that could take forever. But we do like to talk about all the TV and movies and video games where superheroes are the focus. And so, uh, as always, every week we like to get into the news of the week regarding superheroes. And uh, we're just going to jump into that, because there's a lot, actually a lot of stuff this week. Uh, a bunch of them small but uh, relevant news items uh, so we're just going to jump right into it let's get into the superhero news uh first off we're you know we're going to do like we usually do we're going to cover marvel news first and then uh dc and then some other stuff so let's jump into marvel news first um well, you know lottie we we recently as of last week we saw the finale of loki and a pretty major finale. I think is it. I think it's fair to say one of the most game changing, you know, uh, bits of the MCU. It's about as game change. I say it's as game changing as that final end credit scene in the first Avengers, where Thanos sort of like turns his head and smiles uh, like yeah. that. In the sense that um, that uh, not Kang the Conqueror, but a, a variant of Kang the Conqueror was. The, revealed to be you know the the final guy but also mm-hmm. that the multiverse is wide open and that there's inevitably going to be kang the conquerors all over the damn place and yep. of course uh you know he was very very well played uh by jonathan majors uh as as kang the conqueror so uh one of the things that came out this week was just like kind of a i want to say an acknowledgement if you will by the director uh, of Loki about exactly how much more of Jonathan Majors and Kang we're going to be seeing uh, going into the future. And uh, in particular, uh, Kate Heron, who's the director, saying that we're going to see many different, a lot of different versions of, um, uh, of, he who remains aka a variant of kang the conqueror and of course this was teased within the show too about the other variants of of uh of he who remains mm-hmm. um and also about how jonathan majors has kind of he you know as as you know a really great up and coming actor really was really doing a lot of those different versions just kind of working them out himself about how the different versions can be so why is this news? I mean, I, would you say, would it be fair to say this is big, if for no other reason, because he's clearly the Thanos, uh, or yeah. of the variants of He Who Remains are clearly the Thanos of Phase, uh, you know, Phase Five, uh, and so. Can I be honest here? Yeah. A lot of people, you know, might come at me or at me or whatever at the Super Not Funny Show. This is, in my opinion, a more compelling and interesting character than Thanos ever was. In my opinion. The few Ooh, minutes. You hear that? Blah, 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 blah. You hear those, those <laughs> shot being fired? Oh, shit. <laughs> in my opinion, that 45 minutes or 30 minutes that I saw of who of he who remains I was more entertained with him than I ever was with the two or four the four hours that we saw of Thanos I'm just being honest Thanos is a good villain but when you 
can literally, like, you know how Thanos says, I am inevitable? This guy literally means it. <laughs> <laughs> but he literally, he literally, he doesn't even have to say it. I've, I've never, because, you know, he almost gives me anime villain-like vibes. Like, I've never been, quote-unquote, mind-fucked. By a by a villain to the point that I'm literally going like, oh yeah, from the beginning of the day I was like, kill this mother infer, kill him, kill him. <laughs> to now I'm like, oh my god, he has to stay alive. <laughs> just, right. And it's just it's just a testament to the actor, you know, an and actor. Yeah. No, I no I you're you're right about uh, about that like. You get to the end of it, you're like, ah, uh, maybe don't kill him. Um, yeah. But but I think that the thing to really focus on here is that he is a variant. He who remains. Yeah, he's a variant. Is a yeah. variant. Who is? And he talked about all. So, I mean, it seems to be clear. We already know a variant of him is going to be in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania, or AKA yeah. Ant Man Three, but. I think it's all. It, I think uh, you know, multiverse of madness. Uh, Doctor Strange two, multiverse. So is where's is Kang gonna show up in there? There's. I think for the rest of Phase five, we're gonna have to ask ourselves where, or you know, if or when Kang or a variant of him. So that's the thing is, this implication is they may defeat Kang in Quantum Mania, but that ain't the only Kang because no. the multiverse is wide open now. They may defeat, yeah. you know, they may fight him in the next event. Who knows? Maybe he shows up in Spider-Man briefly. Maybe he shows up in Doctor Strange. <laughs> maybe maybe he's passing through. Who knows? No, we don't know. What we do it's, know, it's, it, what we do know is that just because you beat one of him doesn't mean there's not like a million other ones of him. And this is what I love so much about this guy. I just love that. It's and like I said, he's he's been blowing up all over, you know. Oh yeah, people. Twitter, yeah, Instagram, TikTok, even like you know, like I'm starting to even is this guy has been such a pop culture like icon or such a pop culture bomb that even like people who like review anime are now starting to say wait wait hold up are these variants <laughs> they start to look at it. you know they start to ask questions right. like I, you know it just it's such a good such a good character such i like my character. fa my favorite meme about that was i was on twitter and someone posted something that said uh <clears throat> nobody and then it said, uh, it, it said, uh, COVID Delta, uh, COVID said, if you think I'm evil, why, why do you see my variants? <laughs> like, so, so people, people are really like in, in on this. Um, and it's good. The thing is, Jonathan Major, he's, I mean, if you, if you haven't really seen him in other things, this guy is like, he's legit. And so yeah. the fact is, is that he's not just playing one character, he's playing many flavors of the same character. Yeah, and so I expect we're going to be seeing him quite a bit uh, in the in the coming years uh, throughout the MCU. Who knows when he's going to dip in and out of it? Um, so yep. that's that's great. I think it's great news. It's going to be it's going to be pretty awesome uh, to see more of that. Um, and also one other thing, since we're talking about Kang, I, I know I said like you know if they beat him, you know oh, uh, you know it's it could be another variant they see the next time. The other thing that that people I don't think are really considering is imagine you know how how the TVA works. That's literally mm -hmm. the way Kang works. It doesn't it literally you could be beating him doesn't actually mean anything. Like it means something because you beat him in that particular moment, but dude knows what's going to happen in the future. So yeah, I mean you. I I was telling Jen when we were talking about you know we were talking about uh, Kang. I was like. Beating him doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means. Beating him may be what was supposed to happen because it, it, he has plans within plans, and he knows what's happening in the future. And the Avengers have, over the course of their their time, ever since they first encountered him, they realize 
we just got to try to beat him because we don't know what the hell the future is. And he, yes, we may be a pawn in his game, but we don't know. We don't know how to deal with that. So let's just beat him now. Literally every time he loses, he always comes back because the motherfucker knows what's going on. So it's yeah, it's <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's kind of it's it's you know it, it's crazy because we 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 know Kang Kang is three dimensional, but he's as four he is close to four dimensional as you can get because he almost has supremacy over time. It's 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 almost like a man has figured out how to use teleportation. He just can't teleport everywhere he wants to at yeah. any time. You know yeah. what I mean? He knows what's going to happen, but he just doesn't know exactly which version it might happen. You know what I mean? It's it's sort of like that. He's, oh, man, I love this guy as a villain. I just love what it's going to bring, and it's just opened so many doors because, you know, I'm, you know how much I really want to have an Into the Spider-Verse movie, how much I would love to see Doctor Strange try to do what he did to Dormammu. To, imagine trying to do that to Kang. Like, oh. <laughs> well, you know, there's some speculation about that. There's, I mean, there was some talk, on, I forget which website I was watching, where they were comparing the Ancient One and, and Kang, or the He Who Remains, uh, and that implying that the ancient one maybe wasn't exactly on par but was very similar because she did talk about how the many you know terrible futures she's prevented you know over the course yeah. of her time so i mean that's these are all things that that really this spawns uh, in our head uh, mm -hmm. so good job uh good job loki and also <laughs> all the guys at, at marvel studios uh, for that yep. um kind of moving on to a really quick story because uh, there's not a lot here but it is fun to, to think about we all know well if you were paying it been paying attention over last year that blade is coming and blade is going to be played by mahershala ali who is two-time oscar winner um really good actor but we haven't known who the creative team are going to be and so now uh this week we saw that they have uh high or at least they're in talks to get a director uh, a director who I've never heard of, never seen anything by them, which doesn't mean anything uh, when it comes to the MCU because I didn't know who the hell Joe and Anthony Russo were before they directed, uh, you know, um, Captain America Winter Soldier. Uh, but uh, the director, the potential director, is named Bassam Tariq. Uh, in, uh, he's hey, the Pakistani director uh, that's going to be directing this. And I, as far as I understand, they also have a writer uh, on board. And I wish I could, I knew the name of the person that's going to be writing. But so now they got a writer and they've got a director, uh, which means that those are the two things you are essential in making a project move forward, uh, because those are the, the the director and the writer are, the, are whose vision are going to shape the story. Yep. So. That's it sounds good. Now I understand. I don't. You know, you're not a big fan of of Blade. I, I not, surely not, right? I am a massive, massive fan of Blade. It's 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 under. I, I what I'm saying right now is understating how much I love Blade. And I'm excited that they're finally bringing him back. I was one of the main people holding up the banner, bring Blade back. Free him from his tax collector prison. <laughs> 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 so, I really am excited for this new Blade. And like you said, they got a great actor to do it. Right. And like you said, this, you know, um, they got the Middle Eastern uh, uh, director. But, you know, you'll be really surprised that a lot of uh, Middle Eastern a lot of their lore when it comes to like horror demons and stuff like that could probably really go well with a blade movie right you know by the way just real quick is there any rumors about this movie being anything less than rated r you know it's a mcu movie so i would i would say it's going to be pg-13 a very strong uh, a very strong pg-13 uh, so i mean look uh, to be honest let's let, no, let's let's not be let's not get too 
too upset about this. I've recently watched the Blade trilogy, and aside from some cursing and a copious amount of blood, it's not really too much else to it that that wouldn't fit in a PG thirteen movie. Seirously, it's I mean he's yeah he's slicing and dice, but they they turn into like ash as soon as he cuts them up. So there's just like a lot of blood and stuff, and those are blood is something that'll make something rated R. But I think even in context, uh, you know, blood spray can still keep you in a PG thirty. What you what they don't want you to show is a bunch of you know blood you know gushing out of people. So that's why in the, the, MCU, that I, in the MCU that you usually don't, you see people get shot, but you don't see them bleeding, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I figure that that's, they can get away with it. Like, I'm serious. Go watch the first Blade. Then in your mentally erase all the parts where blood is spraying everywhere. And then erase, and then just, you know, bleep the cursing. And then you'll be like, okay, this movie is, it doesn't need any of this stuff, you know? It's still the same movie. Mm-hmm. So... <clears throat> I hate to hate to tell you, no, it's not going to be rated R. But I have great confidence in uh, in Marvel Studios, um, their ability to shepherd, especially a, a young director, uh, shepherd them through the process of making a big budget uh, Hollywood movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and the, the bones yeah. are strong, so you know it should be. It should be. I think it's it should be good. I'm just happy that they're freaking moving forward because you know. Herschel Ali, he's. I never knew I wanted him to be Blade until they were like, he's going to be Blade, and I was like, that's fucking perfect. What do you who? Then and, and and here's the better thing, is that they didn't cast him. He said when he when he won his second Oscar, I want to be Blade, and Kevin Feige was like, whatever you want, dog. <laughs> you want that's they. No, I mean the story. Literally, the story literally goes that after he won his second Oscar. He called up, he called them and was like, no, they, they, um, I think he, either he called them or they called him or like, do you want to do something? And he was like, I want to be blamed. And Feige had zero plans. I'm telling you, he had no plans to do anything. And he was just like, okay, all right, you want to be blamed? Cool. We're going to do, we'll do blade. And so that's, I mean, that's the power of, not just uh, Marvel's, you know, Marvel, uh, Kevin Feige as a as a creator, but also he res- he understands and respects the talent. And if they want to, you know, if they're they want to do stuff, you know, why would you say no to that? So yeah. I I think I'm excited. I just but it's it's too early. We don't know know much except, you know, they're ma- they're making moves. So we will apprise everyone of the situation as further developments uh, come in. Um, moving on to more, you know, the last bit of Marvel news. Something I think is worth a good amount of discussion, <clears throat> and that is um, that Marvel apparently, according, this is according to Victoria Alonso, who is one of the the the, the big three, I would guess you would say, at Marvel Studios. Uh, Kevin Feige, of course, being the Zeus of the of the pantheon at Marvel Studios, but Victoria Alonso. Uh, you could almost say she, you know, she could be, uh, you know, Artemis or whatever. And then uh, Louis De- De Esposito, you know, like Mars or whatever. You get what I'm saying? They're not quite, they're not quite Zeus, but they're definitely, you know, nearby. Well, either way, she was talking in, a, in an interview and mentioned, uh, you know, Marvel's What If, the animated, uh, you know, alternate universe story uh, show. And that it's not the first... But in fact, it's not, it's not the only, but it is in fact the first in many upcoming animated projects that are MCU canon for uh, for Disney Plus, and that they are in fact creating a little mini animation studio within Marvel Studios uh, to uh-huh. produce these things. Now, I'm not going to talk first. I'm going to let you talk because. I I know you are you're a, a superhero animation fiend, and that you you've got you've had all sorts of uh, you know I know with the DC stuff, but also I know you've seen, seen some of the Marvel stuff. So tell me, now that you hear this news, what is what is that uh, what does that say to you, and what's your level of excitement? I love animated movies. I love because one of the things you can do animated movies. Uh, what 
live action can do. I mean, uh, animated can do stuff that live action can never dream of. And I feel like I feel like a lot of um, the superhero stuff has gotten away from animation, but they're slowly going back, especially DC. And now it's good to see Marvel going back with it too because it is nice. It's nice to see animation. I've like I said, I grew up watching the uh, you know Marvel '90s Marvel Spider Man. Even the uh, I know you remember the adult Spider Man cartoon that came out back in like what was it 2002? Right. Yeah, no, I grew up watching all of these like animated X Men Evolution, X Men, all of them, and I've I enjoy them. I enjoy the little storylines that they have, the little things that they do, and I'm excited to see this little what if. Like what I'm seeing right now in one of these pictures, it looks like Killmonger is like a good guy. That would be kind of cool to see a good guy Killmonger, or it looks like an asshole Peter Parker, which there is a comic book where Peter Parker is a villain. But, <laughs> Um, it's just cool to see what they can do with this if they make it into just TV shows or they actually make like movie releases because it would be kind of cool to have little you know little stuff that you constantly have constantly coming on Disney Disney Plus one of the live action shows like you know Loki because we know Loki's getting a season 2 thank, thank the lord um <laughs> Right. You know, while while we're waiting for Loki, you know, they can drop a couple of episodes of these and you know, it will definitely eat up the time. And as I said, I'm 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 happy to see a lot of this stuff go back to animation. You know, this is this is off topic, but um whoever owns Transformers, please for the <laughs> love of God, release another Transformers cartoon, please. Or I'm haven't you, you been watching it on didn't you watch The War for Cybertron on Netflix? Yeah, so I, I watched it. I, yeah, I I haven't, I haven't watched any of that stuff, but I know that they were releasing stuff. So um, there you go. <laughs> there you're gonna get more uh, of at least in in a small scale. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? Well, and I was gonna you know you know mention again that this stuff is going to be canon. Like to my knowledge, now that the multiverse is wide open again. Uh, what if is probably canon I would say at least canon to the multiverse so yeah. if you can well imagine if you will they're doing like a I, I think they're doing a Star Wars approach because you know Star the Clone Wars for a long while you know the movies didn't necessarily have to reflect the Clone Wars the Clone Wars you know they that was filling out the the time between you know uh, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith right Mm-hmm. And now they have, uh, you know, Star Wars Rebels, and I don't know if you've, if you've watched any of these, but Star Wars Rebels um, was was kind of like a, you know, what happened before, you know, in the t- in the time after the Empire took over, but before Luke Skywalker, you know, start sort of had started his adventures, and now you know you have uh, the Bad Batch, which is also taking place, you know, in that kind of timeline, and it's all canon because. You know, they have a, a Dave Filoni who is, you know, kind of part of the brain trust at, at, Luke, at Lucasfilm. He's, you know, he's overseeing all this stuff, and it actually relates back to the movies. In fact, if you saw uh, uh, The Last Jedi, Ahsoka Tano, mm-hmm. her voice was one of the voices that was heard in the Force by Ray. So yeah. you have animation coming back and, and sort of filling in the gaps of story uh and you know in the same way that i would i would argue that at least uh that black widow sort of fills in the gap a gap of story time that we something happened between the time of one movie and another and so the the very idea that these uh that animate this animation studio can sort of play between the TV show, the or you know even episodes of the TV show, but between TV shows and movies and everything, fill in the blanks so to speak uh, about things that happen, have them be real, and then kind of reward us as you know loyal fans to for watching you know kind of have callbacks that aren't that don't make don't ruin movies or TV shows, but they definitely enhance the experience. Uh, yeah. So I'm I I mean 
I'll watch any. Let me just be frank. I will watch anything that Marvel Studios puts out. Straight up. It doesn't matter what they put out. They could put out a fucking cook and cookbook and just have, you know, Tom Hiddleston stand there and read it. And I'll just you know, be like, I'll be like, I'll be like, oh shit, are they? I'll be like, oh shit, how is this going to affect Captain America in the future? Yeah, but honestly, I can see, you know, them doing something like that. But then, like, if, you know, if you actually sit down and wait, at the end, there's like this convoluted thing that's being revealed or this villain this whole time was using this to to mind trick people or something i can literally see something because i think i've seen like a um a video game like on one of the trailers it was literally like something it looked so stupid but if you wait it you you found out it was just like this character was using it to uh to trick everybody if you watch the whole entire trailer you know what i mean Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, look, I, I just, I think, I think that the animation, it's the animation studio has so much potential for, you know, for, you know, good storytelling to give some, you know, some people that maybe don't have, you know, as much screen time to give their, their story some shine, you know, maybe we can see some Warriors 3 and maybe we can see some stuff that was just mentioned, um, or you know, I I, mean, I just I think there's a lot of just a lot of potential for, you know, telling us just telling more more stories because I don't think anyone's tired of seeing or hearing about shit that happened in the Marvel universe. Hell, you know, it's a good place to introduce a character that maybe is just too low level but maybe deserves a little a little time. You know? A little screen time, yeah. Um, it, I just I I don't see where this could necessarily go wrong. It's yeah. the only the only downside to it is that is since it's animation, Marvel is going to have to condition people um, to watch to, uh, to watch to make it, them watch it. Yeah, to watch it and and take it seriously. But I have faith in that too because they've conditioned people that they introduced the fucking multiverse and people are like, "Mhm, I understand. I see where you're going, man." You no way in hell, no way in hell 10 years ago you could have done anything like that. It's impossible. No. 10 years, no, but people are like, "Mhm, I'm following you exactly." And and you know, once again, you know, I'm going to say once again, how, what do I always say about Marvel Studios? They are the smoothest criminals in the game because all they're doing, they're just be like they're just gonna make you be like, it doesn't matter what we put out. You you guys are gonna watch this. Not only are you gonna watch it, you're gonna discuss it. You're gonna keep track of everything so that when you when you get to the movies, you're not gonna be like, who the fuck is that? You gotta know who that is because yeah. people have told you you have to watch this. They ha- they you have to watch these things. These guys are like, they've t- I've told you they've taken the lessons from event comic publishing. You know, they've learned all the lesson. They've taken all the lessons that were learned by Marvel and DC and their event comic comic publishing, and they're applying it to all of their films and their TV yep. and everything. And so now, yes, you can watch Black Widow and never have watched anything else, and you can watch Loki, and you know they explain everything. But man, you got you, you get tired of being like, what? What is? I don't. What happened? I missed something. Yes, you missed something. Go back and watch the damn show. It's on Disney Plus. There's no excuse. So yeah, you know, like real talk. Uh, me and Anthony, we were like, there in the group chat, we were talking about uh, the episode of Loki, and you know his little brother hasn't watched Loki, and uh. His little brother texted and said, "What are you guys talking about?" And Anthony replied with the shack sleeping uh, emoji. <laughs> he say, "You basically say you sleep, man. You need to get <laughs> on this shit and start watching it." <laughs> true. Yeah, no, it's it's true. I I have a uh, my my uh, assistant manager at work is you know she was like, "Oh, guess what? We I started watching." Uh, I started watching uh, WandaVision. I was like, "You just now on that?" And she's like, "Well, I just just got Disney Plus, so I'm trying to fin- you know get through all the Marvel stuff." And I was like, "You're doing the right thing. <laughs> you're right. you go. You were doing. It. You know, I'm just saying. Look, that's that's that is. I'm telling you, yeah, they're the they're the smoothest criminals. They have figured out how to make everyone 
not just want to watch the movies, but have to watch the movies, have to watch the TV shows, have to watch. Now, if they can, I'll, I'll tell you what, if Marvel Studios manages to make animation, animated Marvel stuff, must see, must stream, uh, you know, TV, I'll, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just going to be like, you guys can't do anything wrong. You got a crown on if, that. that point. If, if, if they can break, if they can break that whole stupid prejudice against animation, I will, I will bow to them forever because that's, that's hard. You know, you know how much we, we loved, uh, you know, we loved invincible and people still ain't watching that cause it's a cartoon. So, I mean, if they can break that, you know, they, they can do anything in my opinion. So, yeah, you kind of you you you, you kind of stirred me up when you said that about people don't want to watch. It. He's just making me remember the idiots that I talk that sometimes I talk to. Go like, yeah, man, but it, man, but it's a cartoon. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, all right, I, I would say calm down, Lottie. Calm down. <laughs> it's just, it, it's, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just hilarious because it's one of those things that you just like, God, league has. It's really just give it a chance, you know, especially when they have their friends telling them to, you know, their friends as well telling them to, but yeah. can't tell them nothing, you know. Yeah. Fortunately. Yeah. So what? Uh, I think this is all good news. Let's let's go Marvel Studios. We're we're as always we're pulling for you because that just means we're going to get more awesome Marvel stuff. So uh, yeah, we'll see uh, what this little studio does in the future. Uh, yeah, so DC, they're you know they're they're working on stuff right now. We know Shazam is in uh, is in production, but also uh, the Batman is in production, and of course the Flash is uh, filming right now, which. Um, you know, that's kind of what we want to talk about here is a, some sad photos that were leaked. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you got to see them. Uh, the You know, the photos have been, I've noticed, you know, I've seen this article a couple of times, but the photos have been kind of taken down. So I can just kind of tell you what uh, what was seen. <clears throat> uh, so the, there was leaked uh, photos of the Michael Keaton, the 1989 Batmobile being in uh, on the set these were set photos of the old school uh tim burton batman batmobile on set and also they had <clears throat> set photos of the bat cave uh that uh-huh. were uh that were on display so of course you know fanboys everywhere kind of lost their shit about this you know because once michael keaton was was on deck it, it i mean why wouldn't they lean into that? And they sort of showed like concept art of his, of his uh, suit. And it was, it was the 1989 Batman suit and everything. And, you know, now he's, you know, you saw that picture where he was, you know, he had the white hair. And so now it's making you think, old man, Bruce from Batman beyond. I mean, this, these guys are losing their shit. Um, (laughs) You're you're good on you for, for not losing your shit. Just knowing that. (laughs) That the, you, yeah. you get to see the Batmobile. Um, the other set of photos that uh, we saw, which you can probably actually see, they haven't taken them down, <clears throat> is Barry Allen talking to what we would assume is his alternate universe double. We're walking down the street talking to it, which I didn't think you would be allowed to do that, but, uh, but if, apparently in the DC universe you can, in fact, talk to your alternate universe double and you not try to kill each other. So it does make you wonder what the hell is this story about besides, you know, the flash, some version of Flashpoint, but what on earth is, is going on, uh, within this movie? Um, I don't know what's now that, you know, having heard that and seen these things, what is, what is this doing for your, your level of excitement for, for the, the flash movie? It's always because, you know, what's really causing my level of excitement mainly for the Flash movie is the uh, what is that they called the uh, the way they ended. Um, they gave Flash that epic run scene. It's helping me really become more and more of a you know liking what they can do with live action Flash. So, like seeing the photos, seeing basically they're sort of like it may not be exactly the multiverse of madness. But 
it's cool to see that they're doing like some little different timeline stuff where he's talking to different universes version of himself and uh it, it's exciting like i said i like the flash i always like the flash and it's just it's just giving me confirmation that they're going to probably do him right you know what i mean because with dc they're not like marvel where it's just like shut up and enjoy dc's more like hmm let me see if this is going to be good you know what i mean yeah it's <clears throat> i um it's that's unfortunate that's you know it's weird you know we can talk at, at length about marvel stuff but not so much dc stuff and it's just because they're kind of you know they're kind of toiling away in the dark if you will uh, yeah. just working hard on their movies trying to get them them done and uh and you know respect to that uh, they they are working and it's good to know that they have three projects that are in, in the pipeline that are definitely uh you know they're working hard to get it out next year so um i just can't wait to see more leaks of this because I, I i have to be honest i'm almost certain that the flash is the most the most the thing that's generating the most buzz and it's I, it really is i think the idea that we're gonna get Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton as Batman in the same movie. So, uh, and what else, what other, you know, multiversal shit are they gonna they they gonna be doing? Um, it's I, you know, I I I just want to see it come out. Period. Because it's taking so for fucking ever for them to make this thing. And I do like um, I do like that version of that of Flash that Ezra Miller plays. Uh, I don't care as I have to be honest. I don't care as much about Michael Keaton coming back as Batman as other people do uh or it's just it's, it's it's just funny to see him with the long neck yeah <laughs> well, and, with the dick yeah and I, so stiff right and and you know it is it's i mean cool yeah i just hope it's not gimmicky and that it actually means something to the story because i mean you know we don't need another gimmick in a dc movie we need like for some for real uh storytelling so we shall see, but that you know that's what's going on right now. Um, the uh, last bit of, of news and uh, the DC news is that um, Batgirl has been cast, um, and I you know maybe people don't even know that there's going to be a Batgirl movie, but uh, HBO Max is uh, going to put out a Batgirl movie, and so they found their Batgirl, who is uh, going to be played by uh, an actor named Leslie Grace who most recently was seen in the movie The Heights, uh, the musical. Um, uh-huh. So I don't know that many people have seen that. I I, I, don't, I only watched about half of that movie. <clears throat> um, she's good. I mean, she looks, I mean, she she's good looking and she can sing and she can act. So, yay. Um, <laughs> and you might be like, well, Mo, you know, Mo, why are you bringing this up? Like it's just you just they just cast. I mean, yes, it's important that they cast their lead, but nothing else is going on. We don't have a director or a writer. True enough. Um, even though I think they probably have the story already because it's been in development a long time. I kind of brought this up because I wanted to stir the pot. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> what I, you want to say? I kind of wanted to stir the pot because what do you want to say? Know, you know, look, Lottie. You know, you know, we're 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 nerds. We're we're superhero fans and everything. We spend a lot of time, you know, online with people commenting on various nerdy things, right? So, <laughs> you know how people can be like, that's not the real, that's not the way it is in the comic book. That's not the way it is on the TV show. Why are y'all chaining everything? Blah, blah, blah. blah. All this other, all the other bullshit. So, Barbara Gordon, as you, as you know, is bad girl. I'm, uh, and Barbara Gordon is a is a white woman, right? Yeah. And Leslie Grace is not. <laughs> so, <laughs> in in the interest of stirring pots, just how 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 silly do you think the fan? And now by silly, I mean racist, of course. Do you think the fanboys are going to be about Barbara Gordon uh, not looking like she's? she does in the in the comic book okay i'm gonna I'm be 100 percent honest here the only character in the batman universe that i feel that should stay caucasian is batman because it will 
change his character. Robin could be black of all we know because what is what was Robin? Robin was part of a, of a circus. Anybody can be part of a circus, black, white, Hispanic, whoever. And um, what's the name? Uh, Batgirl. Oh, which Batgirl are they using, by the way? Are they yeah, using... that, see, that's the, and that's the thing is like, uh, that's why I said I was stirring the pot because we don't know. Which is the thing about it is, is there's like I mean, I, I mean, like assuming, three of them or something. Yeah, we assume it's Barbara Gordon, but there are a couple other people. But Barbara could, could be, but Barbara Gordon can easily be a uh, Gordon can be a white guy, and and his wife could be Hispanic. It's, you know, Chicago oh. has a lot of Hispanic people because that's what Gotham City's based off of. Yeah, you know? yes, but they're not saying saying, but but Lottie, they're not saying true to the comic where. It's, you know, Barbara Gordon's clearly a white woman. Why do they have to be? Why? What's all this woke garbage where they're they're race swapping? It would. Why don't they race swap Black Panther? Um, because first of all, his name I'm, is Black. First of all, <laughs> it's, 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 you can't. It's, he's not White Panther. He's Black Panther. But it's you can race swap any character as long as it doesn't systematically destroy the character it's like i told you batman i feel like always has to be white because batman came from white privilege you know batman came from old white privilege money so his character being black he will either have to be completely turn him into an african there you You go i I was was gonna say he's gonna have to be uh he's gonna have to be some uh you know like Black know. Panther, yeah, literally yeah. have to change him <laughs> to into Black, Black Panther, Panther <laughs> for it to make sense. If they change him into Asian, he'll have to be freaking what's his name, uh, uh, Iron Fist. So you have to keep well, Batman. Not Iron Fist, but Shang Chi. But yes, yeah, yeah, Shang Chi. <laughs> like you have to change the character. While the other characters in Batman can be anything, the other characters in Batman, besides, uh, I guess the Penguin. Because you know the penguin comes from old money too, they'll have to be. They, they could be whoever they want. Robin could. I mean, Dick Grayson could be a black dude. He could literally be a black kid. He, you know, <laughs> any of the Robins could be black. Because let's just be honest. The um, the what's the caller from? Usually they usually the the comics they Rice Al Ghul and all them. They're supposed to be Middle Eastern. So really, Batman's son is supposed to be looking part like he's from pakistan or afghanistan you know what i mean but they don't in the comic books when they're actually supposed to i i agree i agree with all that i just i i love this idea though that they just they decided hey we're gonna you know we're going with this actress who who's legit and you know that this is you know i don't maybe it's wokeness and maybe it's just like hey there's plenty of there's plenty of uh you know roles for you know other you know white females within the comic stuff or maybe she's just the best one that who knows who knows what it is but you can't deny that this you know she's talented because she was one of the lead actors in a a major hollywood you know production so um Who knows if she's going to be the best part for the part, but, you know, I'm going to assume that they know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Um, that, she, that she can look the part and all that other stuff. So mm-hmm. um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope that we'll, you know, we'll see some more developments uh, as that moves forward. Um, and I, with that being said, I told you I wanted to stir the pot a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I, I I've been I've been like, who, who, where's the first pe- person that's going to complain about about the the race swap or whatever? If so, but anyway, uh, that's all our news for this week, uh, which it's more substantial than I thought it would be. But I did say that we did have a bunch uh, this week. So uh, anyway. Uh, you guys, what did y'all think about what we were talking about? Um, and do you have maybe some other uh, things that we could be talking about in the news? Let us know down in the comments. And, of course, if you want to let us know by another means, you can reach us by email, supernotfunnyshow at gmail.com or at supernotfunnys1 on Twitter. And we can chop it up about uh, all of these news items and whatever else you guys want to talk about. So, uh, that all down... Let's make our moves 
into the Black Widow, the Black Widow um, discussion. We're going to review and spoiler discuss. Uh, we're going to review and spoiler discuss Black Widow, which just recently came out. I, I, I want to say about you know, a couple weeks ago. Came out a couple weeks ago uh, on mm-hmm. Disney Plus uh, for thirty bucks, and also on uh, you could just go to the theater, and <clears throat> um, it of course is uh, stars uh, Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, also Florence Pugh as Yelena, and you have um, David Harbour uh, and Fred Guardian, Rachel Weisz as uh, Melena, and there's some other people, and you know it's. I don't want to run down the cast list, um, but it is, um, you know, it's a, it's a Black Widow movie 10 years, you know, or I want to say 10 years, but like seven or eight years way past when it should have first happened, you know, and mm-hmm. but we finally got it. We finally got the Black Widow movie that everyone I think was asking for. So um, let's why don't we dive into our non spoiler? We'll do non spoiler uh review and uh discussion first and then we're gonna uh spoil the shit out of it so uh lottie as usual because i like to run my mouth <laughs> I, I, uh why don't you go first before i get get around to doing that okay um first of all i want to get this out first i feel like i have i've i've rarely had these but i have an absolute crush on a Black Widow sister, I have an absolute crush on that actress. Oh my that's, god, that is Florence. Pugh. That's Florence Pugh, who who I might note is an excellent actress. She, I mean, oh she god. she is. You if if you haven't seen her in anything else, uh, I suggest. Let's see, the last movie I saw her in, and I I just loved her, and it was was Little Women, uh, from like a a couple years ago. Uh, she she's just excellent. Uh, I I yeah. I think she's she's a great young talent uh, you know, within acting. So okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was I was definitely fanboying the hell out of her when I was watching that movie. It was I was just sitting there going like, my God, I don't usually do this, but I'm in love. But <laughs> but, bes- <laughs> but besides that, great movie. I enjoyed it. I really like. I was it was. I'm gonna be honest with you. It was better than what I expected. I was, n- I didn't think it would be that good. And my, like honestly, I was just sitting there going like, eh, maybe there might be some parts of this movie I don't like. Some of these movies I don't like. But then I sit, just kept watching it. And I just say, yeah, this, this is a good movie. You know, there might be a little parts of the. I'm trying to think of some parts of the movie that I didn't like. That kind of caught me. But we can talk about that in the spoiler part. It'll probably come back to my mind. But I really did enjoy the whole overarching story. You know, they gave uh, Black Widow a hurrah. If this is a spoiler for you, 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 if you're listening to this, and this is a spoiler to you that Black Widow is dead, there's something wrong with you. So <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say it's just the Oh, my God. Hurrah. Spoiler alert. Hello. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just it's cool, you know, to give her one last hurrah that before she died and it was just you know it's just it was kind of like a little sombering going towards the end because you just see like dang you know what could have been if she stayed alive and it was just cool to see the people that uh that was our family oh yeah by the way i freaking love um the red guardian i love his character (laughs) so much oh between the sister and the red guardian I was rolling in that movie. I was rolling watching that movie. <laughs> I I loved it. Like I really did enjoy the movie. Surprisingly good. Well, I won't say surprisingly good. I will say um I won't say surprisingly good. I will say it was I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Exceed, you know what I mean? Ex- exceeds It exceeded my expectations. Yeah. yeah. It exceeds expectation. That's Hey, that's fair. Um <clears throat> Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, that's your spoiler-free thought. So let me uh, let me jump into mine. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm gonna say that I <clears throat> straight up I liked the movie. I don't know that I don't think I loved it. I did like it. Um, and I thought that 
as I will echo your your sentiments about uh, Florence Pugh as she stole the, to me she stole the show. Oh she, yeah, she, yeah, oh yeah. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I I um I was waiting I, for more of her. I was more excited to see her than uh, Black Widow. Yeah. <laughs> I I I really love this movie for well uh, for really kind of being about the character of Black Widow but also about found families. That kind of seems to be a theme that's going around in in popular media nowadays, but the the, the whole found, you know, the whole the whole idea of found families, not the ones you're born into, but the ones you create uh in your life. And for, you know, for Yelena, for Natasha, you know, um to really find a family union, even though they were kind of thrust together as a part of, you know, an, an espionage unit and the family dynamic. And, you know, um, again, Yelena, as you know, growing up to be a, to be a widow also, but also holding on. Cause I, have you ever seen a, an assassin with so much innocence, uh, ever, like that's, yeah. it was, it was like this weird juxtaposition of, of clearly a, a trained killer, that's killed many people, but also just holding on to that part of childhood that, that was missing, you know, that, that, that was lost at one time. It was just a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, bit of, uh, character work. And I, I have to say very rarely have I seen a character introduced that so thoroughly just like grabbed a hold of me. And I mean, like immediately, like I, I know this, this may seem blasphemous, but it reminded me of how within the first scene or two of seeing scrawny ass Steve Rogers, I was like, hell yeah, that's, that's fucking Captain America right there. I mean, like, yeah. like I was watching Captain America today. It literally within the first couple scenes, you're like, that's Captain America. That's him. He don't have to have the body. He's got, it's his heart. And I feel like that, I feel like that way about uh, Yelena is that she can be the next Black Widow, and I'm damn, I'm fine with that. Absolutely, oh, yeah. I'm okay yeah. with that because I can't wait to see what she can do. Uh, we know she's got the skills. I want to see what kind of you know what kind of person she is, and I I, I have great uh, great optimism for that. And you know, not to make this all a, a, you know a love fest for for Yelena, Florence Pugh killed it, absolutely killed it. Yeah, um, I was not so great on Natasha. Uh, yeah. Just, just, I, yeah. Feel, I feel like she got upstaged in her own movie, uh, yeah, which was, unfor- I agree. which was unfortunate because it's supposed to be, you know, Scarlett Johansson's last ride as, uh, as black widow. So that's unfortunate. She was, you know, she was, it was not, she wasn't bad. She was, uh, I think there was slightly less personality, but she was a, she was much more of a and she was kicking ass as I expected. But I feel like I feel like what happened was she's the black she's the black widow we've always known. But another character who's basically her was introduced and just over like because her like you said what's her name's um I I'm, I'm kind of terrible with names when I first learned them. Uh, say it again. Florence. Pugh. Uh, Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh's uh, performance was so dominant that it just it just overshadowed Black, you know, uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson's, and it just got to the point that you know, towards the end of the movie, when they're focusing on Scarlett Johansson, you just were just like, hey, uh, pan back to uh, Florence Pugh. Let's, let's <laughs> she, get back to the does, Florence yeah, she Pugh. She does parts. get some fun. <laughs> she gets some fun bits. I um, but I, I I'm not saying I, I liked Scarlett Johansson's performance. I liked uh, I liked the character arc. Uh, there are some aspects of it that of the movie, like as far as character work is concerned, David Harper was great. I think Rachel Weisz was a little, uh, just a little underused uh, as Milena as as the mother figure. Yeah. I, I think that the villains were terrible. <laughs> they were not good. Like the main villain. Is a villain I've seen before. It wasn't particularly I'm, compelling. I I didn't believe. I'm not gonna lie. It kind of freaked. He kind of he kind of made my skin crawl a little bit. Well, I mean, it it was meant to. There, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of subtext in this movie. Like, yeah, some of it isn't even subtext. Some of it is straight up. 
this dude's a, a creeper misogynist who only sees wo- sees women as only useful at to- as tools, you know? And, yeah. and he's, a, he's supposed to reflect an old school and maybe not so gone uh, way of, of looking at women. So I there, like I said, there's some there's some subtext, and then there's some straight up blatant messaging that's going on, which I don't it doesn't bother me. It just as a villain, I didn't I, I wasn't I wasn't afraid of what he could do. I didn't think he was legit formidable, even when he revealed his plan and his his reach and everything. I was like, yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> Wakandans <laughs> like you're like a you're like a far less useful version of Wakandan war dogs because I guarantee you the Wakandan war dogs will put a black widow down immediately <clears throat> yeah so I, so so it's like no, no. I, I wasn't impressed by the by the villain um I thought that that uh they underutilized the widows like they promised in the trailers the widows and then we barely see them until, you know, the end. Towards the end, yeah. Yeah, so I was, you know, I was thinking there was going to be more of them. They under, I don't even want to say underutilized, they pretty much botched Taskmaster. In my opinion, yeah. my, my opinion they t- they botched Taskmaster as a character. And so at, it's at the end of all of it, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of really fun, cool action set pieces the main, you know, the main family unit, they all get pretty good screen time and pretty good shit going on. The just it just to, for me, the weakness of the villains kind of brings the movie down a bit. Kind of brings them yeah, it it's it was kind of like it's like I told it's like I told my uh I was telling Anthony. It was sort of like they were trying to make a Captain America Winter Soldier all over again. And it just did not work because the way they made Taskmaster is sort of it's sort of like they tried to redo the Winter Soldier. That's literally what it felt like, and I was just like, it just didn't feel right at all. Yeah, you know what I mean. Which well, I wouldn't and, have minded them redo. That's my thing is I don't mind them taking cues from it, <clears throat> and and uh, in a way, I you know I feel like this movie really plays more like it plays like a, a combination of like. But the born identity and then like some of the ridiculous you know not not real physics of of the fast and furious you know movies yeah <clears throat> and which isn't necessarily bad but just i i wanted a better villain than that like i wanted him to have a better motivation to be more compelling and more interesting and for taskmaster to be better and i didn't quite get that so I came out of it um, being, I you know, I had higher hopes for it than I than I think I got, but I still was very entertained by the movie. I th- I think its its shortcomings are overcome a little bit over yeah, yeah well, overcome by the, yeah. the good. They're overcome by by just the the great character arcs and storytelling that goes on. So I I overall I enjoyed it. And um and I will say and I'll give Jen you know her I'll give her review she loved the shit out of it I'm like like she really really loved that movie like she, it's it's one of her top like she I, I she was like top five for her in the MCU which is you know a little that's I, way too high for me well I mean but I'm but I'm saying like there she's not the only one I've been seeing people really going hard for it on yeah 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 on, it's, online it's, so I, I i can see that but i for me uh disappointment in certain areas really kind of bring it down for me so yeah um but i i think that's that's our i think that's our spoiler free spoiler free thoughts on uh blackwood i think anybody should go see it it's i think it's a really good it's it's a good movie you and it is it important in the mcu uh Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Not not the movie itself, but some of the shit that it talks about, some of the shit that that comes up in it is is important. So uh, definitely go see it, and uh, you know, report back uh, down in the comments. Uh, let us know what you think about that and uh, and our uh, spoiler free thoughts. Uh, so, but if you haven't seen this movie, um, you know, get on and go see the movie and get it get the hell out of there here. Go watch the movie, come back, and we'll chop it up about these spoilers. 
uh, right now. So, all right, if you have don't want to be spoiled, get the hell out of here. So, <laughs> let's you know what? Let's not even beat around the bush. I know what what you, we have to talk about. Taskmaster. Yeah. Motherfucking yeah, Taskmaster. Taskmaster. God yeah, dang yeah, yeah. Taskmaster. Oh, yeah. how dare you know what? This is what this is my biggest pet peeve. Like I'll deal with that with the kind of lame ass bad guy. But how dare you build up Taskmaster yeah. in in the trailers <laughs> like that and deliver this what the hell, you know, not real Taskmaster. Um, yeah, that that was one of my main things me and my brother talked about. Like it was I have no problem gender swapping Taskmaster. But to make Taskmaster this just mindless zombie of a woman who just wants to just beat up somebody that she didn't even know blew her up. And it was just like I'm just like, uh If I, I you know what I would have been I, you know, I have to be honest. If they had gender swapped Taskmaster but had the same attitude and and like yeah MO the same attitude I'd have yeah, been like that that have been that have been fucking badass I would bad love ass. that like I, like I, you know the thing I was thinking they could have had it that she knew about herself getting blown up and she could just be like it's the whole mystery like she's like telling her like I got your moves and all that stuff and she's like oh you don't remember me uh Black Widow but I remember you and it's just like it could have been all of that but no they kept her this mindless just autonomous not, boring all, thing not cool at all just like no just like just in in some fucking armor it's not even she doesn't even have any powers it's the it's all from her armor i'm just yes. like come on man if that's the case just take the person out of the damn armor and just have a just have a fucking iron man suit go around yeah you know karate kicking people i mean come on that's it it would have it would have had more personality I get that there's a tragic story and everything like that, and it was supposed to like really, you know, you know, punch, uh, punch Natasha in the gut about, you know, the, something she did creating her enemies. I get that. I I understand the idea of, you know, heroes or main characters creating their their own worst enemies. But the, he, Taskmaster wasn't her own worst enemy. She literally beat beat up Taskmaster. So that shouldn't even be possible. There, like in the comics. I know that's a stupid thing to be saying about movies and TV shows, but seriously, one of the best things about in the comics was that there were a handful of people that could legit beat Taskmaster in a fight. Like, yeah. uh, you could you could count on two hands people who could fight Taskmaster, you know, going full out and actually beat him. And you know. Black Widow probably is one of the one of them that could actually hold her own, and I just didn't. But it's I didn't get any of that impression. She beat his ass, or beat yeah. her ass, whatever. And it was just I was just like, how can how you guys have a great character that's already established, a great power set, and a potential to be just like a thorn in her side, and it just shows up randomly. And, it, and, yeah. and and the time they show up, I don't believe that they're a legit threat. No. So I'm just like, come on. It was just like a catch off guard, and it, I, I I completely agree with you. Taskmaster Taskmaster's whole thing in the show, in my opinion, I mean, yeah, the movie was really just underwhelming. And the only thing that I just found funny was just how relentless they were with that tank part. That was it. But besides <laughs> that, it was just like. Uh, like, yeah, like I was yeah, just, okay. <laughs> especially at, towards the end after he, after she freed her, after she freed her, and she just kept falling. I was like, okay, this is dragging on. I was just sitting there going like, this is dragging on way too long. Please, I, was just, I, was I don't want to like, see this. Anymore. I was like, can y'all leave, leave Taskmaster on, on this, this, uh, you know, this. Shoddy, yeah, let her this, die. Yeah, let her li die with <laughs> dignity. <laughs> I was just like, can y'all leave her on this shoddy Russian fake helicarrier? Uh, so we we can get a, a better one in the future. Like, yeah. can, can y'all do that thing y'all did with like the Mandarin? Cause like, come on. Or we can get, or or, or hopefully there's a there's, there's another variant of Taskmaster oh, or out something. there. Something. God, my God. Jeez. Or yeah, just... the the actual Taskmaster. And again, doesn't have to be a guy. I just want 
Taskmaster to have some damn personality. Any personality. Yeah. Just yeah, any of, kind of personality. Like, and it's, you know, it's, you, know it's, you know what as bad as this is? You know, I will compare this to. This is like X Men Origin, where they had Deadpool with yes, his soul closed exact, mouth. That is really is how bad it was. Abs- a- yes, like don't do that. Don't just don't. Just how about they didn't? You know what? Don't even name him Taskmaster. It's fine. Make up a new damn character that can like copy moves with software. I'm fine with. Don't call him Taskmaster. So at yeah. least we can get a chance to get you know actual Taskmaster in there. This. Just a drop. What dropping the ball? Just drop the ball yeah. on that one. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> um, what's the? Uh, uh, I, there's not. You know, I have to say, there's not a ton of spoilers in this because, like, none of this shit matters too much. To really matters to the. <laughs> that's to and that's the unfortunate because, like, because they can't retroactively, you know, affect anything. The only what 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 was the consequential? The fucking vest. Like that she wears later on in, in uh, you know, Infinity War, like yeah. like that. That what? Who cares? Like yeah. I, get, I I like yeah. that that it's it's a thing that connects her to Yelena. I, that's cool, but like none of the stuff that happened in this actually has any effect on the MCU. Um, yeah, and I, it was like the few parts that I do want to talk about is you know Yelena. Picking on her landings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what a. Uh, I, I love. She was like, the, "What a poser." <laughs> I love the idea that that Marvel is so self aware that they they can even sit there and shit talk them. They throw shade on themselves, you know. I I loved it. That the the whole little thing about her being a poser was pretty was pretty hilarious. And I under as I understand, uh, Florence Pugh says that that wasn't in the script that she you know sort of uh you know she didn't come up with it I, well she sort of like inspired it because when she was learning the um the fight choreography and she was what you know uh one of the choreographers was like well what kind of po- you know landing pose or whatever you're gonna have she's like what do i need a pose for and then sort of out of that the writer came up with this whole little bit and it, talk about being executed beautifully just yeah. like like you could t- you could tell like could, could, I could feel like maybe there's a little bit of salt <laughs> in the in, yeah. in that. <laughs> it was just funny because she'll go like you remember the store I was like what is she doing then I saw wait wait she's doing the classic woman landing pose so why do all of y'all just just land and you you whip your hair back like, that. <laughs> like what what is that for and then when she does it she was like oh, what a also, <laughs> and, and then in the movie where she finally does it, she says, oh. <laughs> <laughs> "It was, uh, it was, it was really good." Um, I, you know, and I want to, you know, again give mad credit to uh, Florence Pugh and and, and you know uh, Scarlett Johansson. She's an old hand at this, but they they all looked really good in their fight scenes. Loki, yeah. you know, the creators of Loki. Learn something about this. If you're gonna do a fucking fight scene, do a damn fight scene. Like I b- absolutely <laughs> believed in all of the action sequences. I absolutely believe that every single person could do and would perform as an elite assassin. Like I was, I bought it completely. Um, yeah. Even you know, and not only that, they made Rachel Vice look like a utter badass. Like like she was like she's the old seasoned assassin and you know i told i completely bought that um david harbour's red guardian was so awesome he i mean i he was funny he very heartfelt i loved the whole you know arm wrestling dudes in <laughs> in prison you know i love i love this idea <laughs> that this dude's just like he's a super he's literally a super soldier and he, you know, and he's, did, just, and he's just in prison for because of reason. I mean, he got the Isaiah Bradley treatment, it seems. Um, yeah, and he's just he's just arm wrestling people. It's just I love that. Then you know, I just loved how he just showed up when they finally saved him. He acts like nothing happened, like he didn't give them up to that sick dude, and yeah. he's just like, oh my, your guys came back for me, uh, bro. You just gave them up, and he's just like. 
completely ignoring the fact like you know the part where she wanted to be alone and he would not leave and he just started singing and yeah. i was just like Which i was, love this it, dude it was really it was and it was really nice because he did yeah see, nice he did, he did see them as an actual family um, yeah because none of them were you know none of them really could have a family um yeah i did like the part where they kind of like oh you, he's like uh oh, you know i, I want y'all to be great and he's like oh yeah well i can't have kids because you know they had a forced hysterectomy. You know, that's when they, they go up in. And I was like, I can't believe in a Marvel movie they're sitting up here graphically detailing. Telling this. The, yeah. The, the violation of, of these girls uh, that was only only just briefly talked about in Captain America, the Winter Soldier uh, by by uh, by Natasha. So like that they were willing to go there with that. Um, and that is just a sick, a sick. It's. And God, it, 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 I mean, you know, makes the, my the, skin bad, crawl, man. the bad guy has to be a bad guy, but it, I mean, this whole. Do you remember? Uh, it, it's a very much purple man ish, uh, thing like from Jessica Jones about the you know the, the pheromones to to sort of control the widows and everything, and that you know, uh, Yelena was was, you know, she killed somebody but, but got freed by the same person, and was trying to free all the widows also. Mm-hmm. And so, kind of, you know, that's why I said the villains was sort of lame. Was like it really was just a dude with a bunch of highly trained women, you know, doing his bidding. Yeah. And it was, he it, was any, yeah, it, it was weird. Like, am I wrong? This is weird. Like, like some sort of fucking, you know, Arabian night sultan with a harem. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's weird. I mean, it's not just as weird. It's just like he. It was like, just he's creepy. Like it, he's he's a lame yeah. It was. It was one of those things that it made your skin crawl, but at the same time, it was like, it makes your skin crawl, but also it was just freaky because he was just, you know, he's weak. He has no, like, he could have, you know, he could have at least been like, oh, when she punched him for that one time, then when she tried to hit him again, he, like, he could have grabbed her fist and said, where do you think you learned all of those fighting skills from? Yeah, it, that would have been cool if he were Taskmaster, yeah. but like. He just wait well, just a dude. He's just a guy that you know. Yeah. You know. It's, it's just. It, um, <laughs> I think. Uh, what was another? I really there was another part I really really liked. Uh, because I was you know the whole part where where Milena was like I already called them and they're on their way you know because she still worked for the guy. First of all, how the fuck you still work for this dude? He's awful. He's just a terrible terrible person. Uh, yeah. But. She was also realizing she's also being controlled, just like you know, just like all the other widows were. She's a widow too. She's being controlled too. Um, but you know, the thing about with her that made it even creepy, it makes me feel like he actually, truly did violate her in the sense if you know what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, it's it's possible. I mean, I don't think that they need to go that route to make him a terrible, terrible person. I mean, it, the fact is that he he programmed, you know, all these girls from childhood and programmed to be killers and trained them to be killers, but also programmed them with, you know, chemical chemicals to, like, sort of, you know, have them stay in line and do what he mm-hmm. says. I mean, that's, pl- that's plenty terrible enough. You don't have to throw all... You don't have to throw the rest of that in. Um, but I, I did enjoy where they they kind of subverted an expectation of mine which is she's like the the trusted person that really is working for the bad guys and and you know it's gonna you know give everybody up and then now you know the jig you know we we think we have safe harbor but instead we're actually not and then everybody gets captured and everything and i love the way they they did a call back to that technology from the winter soldier with with the whole face changing like uh, you know digital face changing mask, yeah. So, like I was I was like y'all thank the Lord because I was about to be pissed that I was going to be mad at right at uh, at Malena for being like a traitor and it turned out yeah she that, wasn't that she wasn't and like her true loyalty was wasn't to that guy but was to her her family so it's yeah. it all it all revolved back around to that uh, that whole idea. Um, I did want to ask you though, like, did at any point did you feel like you were watching video game cutscenes? Because <laughs> that I was feeling yeah. that in several parts. I was like, oh, you know what? Oh, this you is a cutscene. 
You know what? <laughs> You're absolutely right. I couldn't put my hand. I couldn't put my finger on it. You are absolutely. It did feel like that. Like I'm watching them. Like you said, a video game. It was like felt like a video game cutscene. Like, it felt I was like, like a, a solid snake about to come out of this. Is what, yes, what's, what's happening right now? It felt like watching the Marvel Avengers TV show. Yeah, I, I mean the Marvel Avengers video game, but they they had the little cutscene for Black Widow. Yeah, it's I which I might I'm not I'm not I'm really not shitting on it because uh, the action in this movie was just on point. Like it, it there's there's a lot of action in it. Big you know, explosive set pieces and that clearly wasn't actually happening because uh, who wants to pay for all those explosions and making a, a big fake Russian prison that's that's under an avalanche. It's a lot of mm-hmm. CG and it shows. Um, yeah. But even even when it shows, it's it's still, there's still a lot of really fun stuff. That, I just, you know, I, the reason why, remember I said it was like Fast and Furious because in part because apparently in the Fast and Furious universe, you know, everyone's a super soldier because they can fall from ridiculous heights and not die. And they <laughs> do the same thing in Black Widow. Shit, I'm like, how is Natasha standing? Like, you're falling from a plane, you're fighting somebody on falling bits of debris and shit like that. They're knocking you through windows and shit like that. How are you not dead? Like, yeah, there was a couple. There was a couple of parts in the movie that I'm like, she should at least be blooded or something, anything. I get it that this is PG-13, but like seriously, uh, but, why but are you Cap- not dead? But they, but I can't give up that because they show Captain America, Winter Soldier, with a little bullet in his uh, abdomen. So I can't. And he was beat up and bloody. She's just somehow, like you said, somehow probably hanging around Steve Rogers. She probably took some of the. The super soldier serum oozing from, I guess, his sweat or something, <laughs> or bang when she was banging she, the Hulk. Maybe some of his like Hulk genes got on her and she became invincible. Like, but that that only <laughs> explains Natasha because all of the other character, the only other character that should be surviving any of this shit is the Red Guardian. He's literally yeah. the only guy. Everybody else. Because remember, be like even her. the. Uh, Remember even the black girl that fell off the uh, that little swinging thing when they were trying to swing across the building. The only thing that happened to her, she just twisted her leg. Well, and she I was had, just she like, had a comp- yeah, she had that compound fracture. But I'm just like, yeah, but you not dead. Real, yeah, real talk. Her whole body will be if she was alive. Her whole body will be almost like the whole body will have a compound fracture. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, that's. I, I, but it's Marvel logic and you know shit. Like, I just I would like for them to observe the fact that. You know, unpowered people are in fact unpowered, and like they get hurt. Like just, yep. just let's just let's acknowledge that people are in fact going to get hurt. You can't go around punching people full force and not have broken, you know, or, or bruised knuckles or something like that. Like, like not at all. Um, but still, it's a it's a Marvel movie. I what what, what do you expect? You, you know. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so I I mean you know overall I. Like I said, there's not a huge amount of stuff. The only other this we got, I guess we have to this last very last spoiler that actually means something in the MCU. Yeah, so, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking. Yeah, about. I'm, and I'm kind of on a uppercut. I, I liked her at first, but now I want to shore you can her in the face, freaking Madam Viper. She's like, <laughs> well, we don't know that that's her yet, but we know she's well. She's supposed to be Madam Madam Hy- Hydra. But, Madam Hydra, uh, whoever she is, she needs to get sure you can right now, because it was like, God dang! Now, you, now he's supposed to be retired and happy. Now you're going to force him it, out of retirement. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious as to how the hell we know. Uh, you know I think Valentina, uh, she's supposed to be the anti Nick Fury. Probably the speculation is that she's building the Dark Avengers, which which would be you know, would make sense relative to Falcon and Winter Soldier where, you know, she recruits John Walker. And so yeah. apparently at this point she's she hadn't just recruited John Walker. She uh she's also apparently had previously recruited because remember this takes place before the oh well that takes place after this after Endgame. But apparently 
she had worked with uh, Elena had worked with her before, so I guess Elena's a mercenary or something like that. Well, I'm not really sure. Yeah, but... and that's one of the things that I I was a little disappointed in Elena when I saw that. I was just like, God, your sister tried to help you get out of this, you know, and you're just putting yourself right back into it, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, she she's gotten she's in the superhero game now, but she's in that in the mercenary side. She you know like Heroes for Hire or Thunderbolts or whatever. So in this case. You know, she clearly she does jobs for Valentina, and we don't know Valentina's game officially yet, even though we know her from the comics. Uh, but the fact that she, this bitch points out points <laughs> points her to to Clint, uh, and we know, oh, do you know Florence Pugh is in is going to be in the Hawkeye show later this year? Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I, and I, yeah, I know I'm going to see my baby soon. I'm see her again. <laughs> So, it, so it's, I mean, that was a big reveal and it was like, Oh, Oh shit. And I'm like, all right. So this did, this wasn't a completely, you know, you know, kind of, you know, unnecessary side mission that, you know, got, gets you some XP, <laughs> but doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily <laughs> advance the story. Uh, we, we did, we did actually get some, uh, important info. Um, and so unrelated, but like made me think, just your, you know, yes or no. Do, did you, do you think Yelena was gone for five years or was she, or did she live the five years of the, after the snap? Mm. <laughs> she so was I'm, gone. You think, think she gone? was gone? Okay. All right. I think she, I think she, I think I, she, I, I think I, she got snapped. I, I think she lived through it, but we're going to see. I think she, I think she lived through it. Uh, the reason why I feel like she got snapped. Oh, you know what? No, you're right. I think she got snapped. Because uh, I think I think Natasha would have lo- would have looked for her. Yeah, that's why I said I think she got snapped because, and plus, it seems like Natasha's death was like, like you could see the way she's reacting to it. It's like almost like a slap in the face. Like she did not see this coming whatsoever you know what i mean yeah like it, it seems like dang you know just one moment you were here the next moment you were not and that's why i feel like yeah that this is a um she she didn't live through it yeah <clears throat> i'll i'll yeah I'll, I'll accept that i'll accept that so um i think that's all the spoilers man i think that's all the spoilers for the for the movie um again I think we, we both liked it. Lottie liked it more than I did. Um, but definitely go out and see that. In the theater, I'll say this. See it in the theater. I have not watched it on TV at home yet. But I it was really, really badass uh, in the theater. So if you can get out to see it at the movie theaters, you do that. Because that's the way it was meant to be uh, enjoyed. So, <clears throat> um, all right. Well, those are our uh, spoiler dis- uh you know our spoiler discussion slash spoiler thoughts on Black Widow. So, uh, what did you guys think of the movie, and what did you think about our uh, thoughts? Get down into the comments. Let us know what you're thinking about. Uh, what you think about our uh, what we had to say. And of course, you can always hit us up supernotfunnyshow at gmail dot com or supernotfunny s one on Twitter. Uh, let's let's chop it up about this movie and what it means for the rest of the MCU. And hey. Uh, while you are in in the mood to uh, be clicking buttons, why don't you hit that subscribe button? You can join the Super Not Funny Show family, uh, and also hit that notification bell to let you know when we drop new content. And we're always doing new things, reactions, reviews, more podcast stuff like the Super Not Funny Show Gamer Cast. That's where Lottie and I uh, we branch out a little bit from the superhero thing and talk about video games, uh, all these things video games. Uh, we just started doing that. It'd be really cool if you joined us uh, and check that out. All right, uh, Lottie, uh, you know what? Why don't you let everyone know uh, where they can reach you on uh, your social media, man? Yeah, you can always find me on my uh, Instagram, which is Anokinihun, A-N-U-K-I-N-I-H-U-N. Again, it's Anokinihun, A-N-U-K-I-N-I-H-U-N. And you can also find my videos on um, YouTube, which is just Kenny Hoon 25. A lot easier to, to find me there. 
I upload videos of uh, characters that I'm building, um, gameplay that I'm working on. Also, now I'm starting to upload, uh, you know, gameplay of me playing some games, you know, become a little bit of a streamer. Hey, why not? <laughs> it's the way to riches in this in this new age, apparently. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Yeah, you guys go and check out uh, Lottie's various social media and his YouTube. Subscribe, comment, show some love. You know how you, how we do around here. Uh, just mm-hmm. gen- generally speaking, just support your boy. So and so, and of course, support the Super Not Funny Show. All right, all you fabricants and flashbacks, thanks once again for joining us. Uh, thanks once again also to Lottie uh, for giving us his insight and his opinion uh, about all these superhero things. <clears throat> and uh, join us next week. We're going to come back. We're gonna, I think we're going to be talking about Comic-Con at home and all, all the stuff that comes out of that. So come back and join us for that. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you then. Until then, I have been Mo De Poupay your resident fabricant and commenter extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by my good friend Lottie, um, the anime expert, uh, video game fanatic and designer, and also, of course, lover of all things superhero. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Peace.